Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Little Things Podcast. I'm Bethany Warner. And I'm Rachel Hines. And I will never, ever, ever get tired of hearing you say that. You sound so (laughs) professional. It's because I listen to a lot of podcasts and I pretend that I'm really I listen to a lot of podcasts as well. But remember that one time I started the podcast and it was a train wreck. (laughs) That's the (laughs) best. That's okay. Remember that one time when I kept almost saying the wrong name of the podcast? Because again, whatever. But you know what? Human. We're human. We are human. <laughs> um, this is going to be one of my favorite kinds of podcasts, a continuation. Mm-hmm. Do you get excited when you're a podcast? Like if you're listening to one, you're like, oh my gosh, I wish it wasn't done. And then you're like part two when There's you see it the next one. week. I love. It's like the the olden days on with sitcoms when it was to be continued. <gasps> you had to wait a whole week for it. I know, but we didn't even know this one was going to be a to be continued. But it's just that important. I told Rachel I woke up this morning feeling kind of ranty, so watch out, world. <laughs> <laughs> That's the. I I have to say I really enjoy ranty Bethany. No, I, I got a lot of stuff going on in my brain. <laughs> That's well. It's good to share. Yeah. And Randy, when we're talking about Christ and our faith and how it affects our families, I think that's a really good thing to be ranty about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I woke up at four o'clock this morning. I think I just have a lot of things are coming together at the same time, like this Bible study I'm doing and different conversations I've had with people. And um, I just woke up at four o'clock and could not sleep because my head was going just reeling and just I don't know. Like you should have come hung and hung out with Maddie. She was up four thirty. You guys could have had coffee together, <laughs> <sighs> Maddie. You guys could have had a great, it out. We had a great conversation. We could have. It was a very loud conversation in our house. She gets extra excited at four thirty in the morning. So, so does she get out of bed or she stays in bed? No, she gets out, and I'm always up just shortly after You're that. Insane. So, like, I could hear her door. You always hear this little pop, and it's always. Hi, mommy. <laughs> She's happy. <All> right. <laughs> it's we're starting the day early, but here we go. Mm-hmm. So both of you must have had things going through your brain. Yeah. So last week we talked about passing the faith on to the next generation. Parents being the f- primary sharers and shapers. We talk yeah. a lot about that at Messiah. Um, we talked last week mostly about conversations. Yeah. And kind of um, be, just being prepared to have them, have well, them and, at any yeah, point as yeah. you are going. Yeah, and preparation. Honestly, like for for us as parents, we want to um, encourage those conversations, but we also either want to have good, solid answers that we're sharing with our kids, or model how to find them, which is going right back to God's word. Right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so. Last night, I think I'm just kind of evaluating our Wednesday night program, and it's coming to the end of the year, so I always think, how sure. can we do things better? What can we do? And you're a really good reflector. You like to reflect and go and... and Some people see. say reflect. I might say obsess, <laughs> which is why I was up at four in the morning. Yep. <laughs> That's okay. That's why you're so good at your job. Right. And just thinking how... So moving these kids from elementary school into middle school into high school what do they need as those foundation blocks of their faith and what are we doing as the church and then what is our limitations as you know just the wednesday night program or just a sunday morning and how can we be equipping parents because i love wednesday nights and i think it's great and if your kids are only coming to Wednesday nights and that's the only time they're hearing God's word. God can do amazing things with anything, but Right. Um, and I'm gonna use your and, and as parents, we are called. God tells us that that we're the ones we need to be sharing all the time. You mm-hmm. read the verse last week or in our last episode. Yeah. This is this is our calling. So I had my fifth graders last night, and we had excellent conversations, and they are filled with questions, and I love their little hearts. And I was honest with them, and I'm like, guys, you, we need to get serious about learning these stories, yeah. because 
that is the foundation, is just knowing your Bible stories, yeah. knowing that is going to teach you who God is and who He is to His people and who He is to you and how you fit in to this body of believers. Right. And so I challenged them to do a reading program with me this summer. I love that. Mm -hmm. And it's intense. And I said, it's not going to be easy. You have to read every single day. And if you don't, you'll have to catch up, but it's doable. Yep. And I told them if they do it, they get a $10 gift certificate from wherever they want. Wow. Which I just made up off the top of my head. I'm like, I hope I can actually do that. <laughs> that's, but that's, you know, a, a reward, a motivator for yeah. them to... to Make a habit of being in God's Word every day, which is what we all need. Yeah. And I'm going to make it a challenge to all the Wednesday night families because, again, we do the we do Bible stories on Wednesday nights for mm -hmm. elementary school, and I think that's what we need to be doing um, is setting those foundations. But there are so many stories, yep. and um, it's just so important to be able to have that ingrained in your in your heart and yeah. in your mind and um have that truth in you. Yeah. Not, I agree. Yeah. And not um you know, kids are very like they love stories. They are do you, you read a lot of kids' books, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> On occasion. <laughs> this is a little ranty, I warned you. I like I, again, I like Ranty Bethany. Bring Have it on. you noticed in children's books, there are kind of two kinds of books. There are storybooks, and then there's kind of like, you are beautiful no matter what kind of books. Yes, for sure. Which I think have a time and place. Yep. But I think the storybooks are what kids hold on to, right? Right, yep. Because that makes sense to them. It's a story. Maybe the... There's not enough Velcro for the other things to stick as much. Yeah. Would so you agree hearing, or disagree? I agree. And do you remember, I think it was actually on the podcast when Haley Jackson was here. And maybe it wasn't actually on the podcast. Maybe it was when we were talking after, or maybe it was a conversation I had with her. But when we talk about, like, and this this is going to be a long way around to your point. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, when we talk about, like, little boys with fake guns and doing cops and robbers and all that kind of stuff and acting that out. And she said, there's studies that show that that is, that's their way at a young age of figuring out, okay, there is good and evil in the world. There's, you know, all this and trying to make sense of the, the world around them. But I think through actual stories, mm -hmm. that's another way to for children to really explore the world around them. It's great to give affirmations. I think mm -hmm. those other books are kind of like affirmation books, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I can tell you for myself as an adult, if I'm reading a book and it's all like, if I'm reading a devotion book and it's all <laughs> flowers, mm -hmm. I by the end of the day, I can't, it doesn't Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you what I read in the morning. However, if it's something, even with a little bit of grit to it, that I can apply to my life and go, oh, mm -hmm. okay, this is going to make me think about this in my life or whatever, then it's going to stick with me at least through the day, if not longer. I agree with you. And when you're reading a story, you can see yourself in some of those characters. Right. Or you can see how this person persevered through this or whatever. Yep. And in Bible stories, we see how God works in these people's lives, and we can see, oh, He is faithful to me as well. He loves me. He yeah. loves the church. He loves us as well. Um, anyways, what else was I going to say? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> well, and it just made me think. I oh, this oh, is go, what go, I was going to say before you lose it. <laughs> well, it's Catch not it. really even helpful or beneficial. Um, but Maybe you're I talking keep about talking then. <laughs> you're talking about acting out, which you can act out Bible stories as yeah. well. My brother-in-law said when he was growing up, they used to act out crucifixion. It was a game they played. Who <laughs> they played crucifixion, and they'd take turns. Who was Jesus, and who was like the guards, and who were the disciples? Like you're the weirdest person <laughs> ever. But it was. Obviously, it shows it was meaningful in their life. Yeah. <laughs> we, the best day of my young young life, I can remember, is getting a hymnal 
for home. Mm -hmm. I think they were updating hymnals in the church or something. And so we got a blue hymnal to take home. My world changed because we had church so Mm -hmm. many times in my little yellow um, bedroom. (laughs) Everybody that came over got to play church, but that's great acting. Yeah. And really that's what we want, right? We want to tell the story of Jesus. We want to understand this, all the stories. We know all of the Bible is important for us and has meaning for us. I, I'll be honest, I struggle. Like I, if you give me a a choice, Bethany, you're very cerebral. You're very smart. You're a thinker. You like to think, you like to ponder, you like to reflect. Okay. Am I accurate? Well, you're, okay. If, <laughs> if not, you you come across I that way. I think it well, yes. <laughs> Very well. But um, if you give me the choice between learning more about a deep topic and reading a fluffy book, mm. I'm going to take the novel any day, just because that's how my brain works. So for years and years and years, I mean, I was, I, I can say with joy that I was, there's not a single moment in my life that I did not know God. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that I was a redeemed child. And I'm so grateful that that's, that's the upbringing I have, that our faith was very present in our home. But some of those Bible stories, like when I, and I've read the Bible all the way through, I've done studies and sometimes I feel like it just goes in one ear or in one eyeball and out the other. And so one of the things I've learned, and I think we, it's important for us to give our children that exposure so they learn how to learn God's word. Just like mm-hmm. we learn different, what do you call them? Topics? Not topics. In school. Subjects. Subjects. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. See? The cerebral one yeah, over here. well, you know. Thank heaven. There's got to be two, right? There's got to be a cerebral one and kind of the dingy one. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> we, won't, we, won't, we won't say which one is which on oh, this podcast. No. <laughs> I think we're both the same at the same time. But I think, like for me, understanding... I am a total, I'm a visual learner. So, and I like the word pictures. I'm, I like, I love art. I love to see mm-hmm. a story take shape. And I think that's why I enjoy reading novels because I can paint my own picture, but not realizing until I was much older that God has painted a picture mm-hmm. for us through God's word. And I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be totally truthful right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I saw it more as a chore than a blessing that I get to be, I get to devour this, the, all these wonderful stories that are presented in front of me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. My husband is, uh, went to Lutheran school growing up and I did not. I went to public school and Michael knows every fact of the Bible. Like he name a judge, name a king, and he will tell you wow. if he was good or bad and how he died and everything about him. And my brain doesn't work that way. Like I don't keep those little details in Same. and that's okay. <laughs> Um, but you know, being familiar again with, with the whole picture of how it works together, you don't have to know every little Mm -hmm. and definitely not how to pronounce them because I definitely don't know how to pronounce a lot of the names and things in the Bible. Um, but being familiar with it is so important. Okay. So this was the, my other little ranty thing we're talking about. Okay. Talking about... And this is like more cultural and and just how the faith is um, lived in America, mm-hmm. especially with children or talking about it with children or middle school and high schoolers of making it like, well, that prosperity gospel yeah. of, you know, God, if life's going to be good. Yeah. God is going to bless you with all that. You're going to live a happy life and everything's going to be great. You're going to get everything you want. Yes. False. False. <laughs> and I feel like I've had this conversation with like three different people and I'm like the biggest Debbie Downer ever in the conversation because it is like, well, life's just going to suck no matter what. <laughs> well, but, but that I think kind of true? it, well, and I think it's, it's reality. And I think that that's such a, a gift that we give our children is not, a, n- not to say, listen, mm-hmm. <laughs> everything about your life is going to suck right. for you. and, and have that negative outlook, but also saying you are going to have hard things that happen. Look at, look at this person in the Bible, like, and, mm-hmm. but who was with them through that whole time? And mm-hmm. 
And what, what do we know? What do we know since, oh gosh, because we're not waiting for the Messiah to come. He's already come. So mm-hmm. we have that end of the story. We know that God kept his promises and, and we know what forever looks like. And, and in the, this sinful world, it's not going to be. Yeah. The rainbows. more we are familiar with those Bible stories and the stories of those um, faithful characters were, we get to know first that all of them were sinners and sometimes pretty wild yeah. sinners. Yeah. And they were redeemed and even called righteous by God. Also, we know that their lives were really hard yeah. and they still trusted and they still had faith and they knew that that was truth. Not because their life was peaceful and happy and easy. Right. But almost when their life was the worst yep. is when they looked to God. We just studied Job on Wednesday night, and he didn't curse God. No. He, he said, blessed be your name, you give and take away. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was talking to my dad about this, who he is retiring in the fall. He has been a pastor for, well, 35 years, I think. That's amazing. Yes. And um, 36 years, maybe. He is um, anticipating retirement in the fall. And I was talking to him about it, and he was just like, he's like, I'm all the emotions. I'm excited, and I'm scared, and I'm sad. And he shared, after 36 years of ministry, he feels like just now he's starting to figure it out. (laughs) Like, just now, I wish I could take everything I know now and start over and do it all again. And I told him, okay, so what you're telling me is <laughs> I'm never going to arrive. Right? I'm never going to reach a point in my life and be like, oh, everything's great and easy, and I'm so confident, and I totally know what I'm doing. Nope. No, that's not a thing. As ridiculous as this sounds, like that, hearing that gives me such a level of peace mm-hmm. because somebody that has preached and proclaimed God's word for 35 plus years still is just now feeling like not even an, well, an expert, could you call it? I don't, whatever. I mean, I think he is an excellent pastor, (laughs) but But. to feel like, oh my goodness, you know, all these years, then, then it's okay that, that maybe Mm -hmm. Rachel doesn't have it all figured out and that we all have to daily be in God's word Mm -hmm. to keep figuring it out until... Yeah. Jesus comes again. And yeah, just knowing and resting in that, like, God is using me despite myself yeah. most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that idea of um, we can't. We we can't think like well if I just learn this lesson this lesson then yeah. I'm really gonna figure it. then I'm really yeah. then I will have arrived then I really will have that peace all the time or yeah. that joy all the time and we talk about like that joy of being just in us and maybe that doesn't mean we're happy all the time but we have that peace and we yeah. have that joy and that's true but also like we just get glimpses mm-hmm. here on earth and um my dad was sharing he has gone to Kenya a few times and worked like in refugee camps and really have talked to people whose lives are probably not going to get better like right. they're not right and he said they talk so much about the new creation and the hope that we have in Jesus coming back and there really will be a new earth that has no more sorrow, no more sin, no more death, no more pain. Jesus will wipe away every tear from our eyes. And that is what they cling to. Yeah. And that's that's where their eyes go. Yes. Right? Not to this this sinful, sorrow filled place, but and I feel what's like coming. We still put our hope in, well, it's gonna we're gonna get better. Yeah. Like I'm gonna get faith strong enough that's gonna be you know, unbreakable, right. or I'm going to feel, you know, whatever, like I can do anything. Right. And then where are we putting our faith? Yeah. In what we're capable of doing, which isn't much, right? Which we live in a broken world mm-hmm. and we are broken. Right. And God 
is so merciful and and kind and loves us and comes to us this way and works in our lives this way and can do amazing things through us, again, kind of despite ourselves. Yep. Um, and we also have hope in the resurrection right. and that new creation. Well, and I think it's one of those important things to remember, too, is when we... We, we say, okay, because I'm faithful, God's, I'm going to be happy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to. What happens when you're being, and I'm quoting, faithful and praying, um, and all of a sudden that person isn't healed? Like right. Your, that job you wanted doesn't mm-hmm. happen. Yeah. You don't get the pony you wanted for Christmas. <laughs> like, we, I don't know. I have told you this. I don't know if I've said this on the podcast or not. But when I was going through infertility stuff, and I did for a long time, for like nine years, yeah. which is a really long time. And I just kind of Googling things or like looking at different people who have experienced infertility, especially, and especially Christians. And there's like one mindset that is very much like you got to be positive and you have to say this is going to happen and you know God keeps his promises and he's going to listen to your prayers and all of that and yes this is going to happen. And I just couldn't I couldn't do that. Yeah. Because I just think well who am I to tell God that right. this has to happen? Mm-hmm. And God does keep his promises but he never promised me that I would have a baby. Right. And, you know, there's that verse of God will give you the desires of your heart. Well, my desires should be His desire. Yes, right. You know, yeah. that doesn't mean my desires are sinless or, mm-hmm. and I don't think wanting a baby is sinless, but I think, or is sinful, but I think me telling God, this is what I need. This like, is what I need. This is how my life should be. look. Yeah. Listen here. Yeah. That's not saying thy will be done. And that's not saying, all right, I'm, putting my trust in you, you know better than me, your timing is perfect. And so I could never do that. And I had to think the opposite and think, if this never happens, am I going to be okay? And is my faith going to be okay? Mm -hmm. And it has to be. Mm -hmm. I have to know that even if this, what I want more than anything, doesn't happen, that God's promises are still true. And they are. And they would be even if I didn't have Daniel, yep. because that is truth outside of myself and outside of right. how I feel. Well, and we were chatting about how we're such an an inward facing culture, and mm-hmm. we have so many blessings living in the United States of America. We can complain all day about everything, mm-hmm. but we generally don't go hungry. Maybe we don't have the healthiest food. Maybe we don't make mm-hmm. those choices. But, um, I know often my biggest concern is not eating too much. Right. Right. Um, I was complaining uh, on Sunday. I did like eight loads of laundry. I have, have enough clothes. clothes to do eight loads of laundry. And we get to wash them in machines in our homes. Yes. We have, and we, you know, one of our, as parents, we often hear we're so busy. We're running our kids here, here, here. Wow. That's, that's a, complaint right mm-hmm. that we have is that where our kids get to do have enjoyable so many opportunities yeah, yeah. Um, they're not out working in fields right like, to just provide food for our families uh, just we're, we're just in a land of excess right now mm-hmm. but I think that it's really because of we have so much we just turn inward all the mm-hmm. time and sometimes that leads to that well duh, I'm looking at myself, so I should be, Yeah. if God is faithful, like like he says he is, then that means that I'm going to feel good mm-hmm. because I'm right now, I'm so about myself. and Which leads into that, well, I think God probably, you know, means this, or, or Jesus would probably mean this to me, or this is who Jesus is to me, you know, and I get to kind of pick and choose. And I mean, whatever the desire is or whatever it is, well, of course Jesus would want me to 
maybe just have a baby. And again, of course he does. Like, yeah. I'm not saying he doesn't, but, but of course Jesus would want me to have this brand new car, this new house or this vacation. I don't know, right. whatever yeah. it be. Um, but that's not really what it's about. Right. So my, the other thing that's like going crazy in my brain is I've been doing this Bible study and, um, Oh, which shoot, I should have like looked up her name. <laughs> but she's all about, um, well, the Bible study is called Gospel on the Ground, and her first name is Christy, and it's amazing. I highly recommend it. And she's talking about the church um, in the book of Acts, and that's the early church, and how counterculture it was from the rest of the culture. And one of those ways was how communal it was. And we read that in Acts 2 with the, the giving everything up. And they um, you know, would take in orphans and they would do... Um, they were very counterculture. It wasn't sure. a status-driven thing. It was a, we're taking care of each other, we're a family. Yeah. And she pointed out in the original language... So many of these yous, when Jesus is preaching, like the Sermon on the Mount, when he's talking, it's not a you individual, it's a you plural, it's a y'all. Yeah. And she went on to say, you know, in our culture, we talk a lot about that personal faith or having this personal relationship with Jesus, which, okay, that was not a thing in the early church. Right. It was a communal thing. It was a we, our Father who art in heaven, yep. not just mine. It's something bigger than myself. Yep. And I just think on Sundays when we say the creed, and I'm saying I believe in God the Father Almighty, but I'm also saying it with everybody, all these other people. Mm -hmm. And maybe today I'm exhausted or I'm doubting or I can't, I can't say, I can't do a lot. But I'm saying that. this, and I'm oh, looking at like, hey, she's saying it too. Mm -hmm. He believes this too. How important is that? Instead yep. of the, I need to figure out who Jesus is to me, or I need to figure this out, it's a, no, it's already it's figured already out. Done. It's a yep. truth outside of myself, no matter how I feel, and no matter who I am today, because... Yep. And where I'm at with my emotions. Yes. Because on those days that my emotions are really high or really low, there's one thing that's unchanging, and that's our God. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm constantly changing. So it, that faith shouldn't be centered on how I'm feeling. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're, we look to our baptism. Right. That's the Lutheran faith of that, doc, that beautiful gift of baptism where... God calls us and He comes to us. And yeah, no matter what I feel or what I have done, I can say, but I am baptized and yeah. I am a child of God. I am redeemed. And he's Those faithful. promises are still true, mm -hmm. even if I don't feel today. Yeah. No. Yeah. See, this was a, that was That's a good rant. That's my rantiness. That was a very good rant. See, <laughs> very important. And I think, I think kind of drawing it together too like as parents we're both parents it's our it's really our job to set our children up for success in having that basis those building blocks for their faith and that's being in God's word when you were talking about um all the great offerings like at Messiah we have Wednesday nights which I just love you put so much work into that and I'm not kidding when I say you're really good at what you do because we have so many great opportunities for all ages to be in God's word. But I look at myself and quite honestly, you know, I was talking last week about getting this box and I am not shy about saying middle school years are my least favorite years to parent because I feel so disconnected mm -hmm. from my kids. And we, we've always been in the practice of doing um, devotions and Bible studies together as a family and praying together at night. Sometimes my middle schooler goes and, and heads herself off to bed before we've prayed. And you know what? And I'm super ashamed to admit this, but sometimes I've let her because I'm exhausted. And I'm like, you know what? My number one job is to make sure 
that this is consistent. We were talking about boundaries with, with something totally different, mm-hmm. but that's a boundary. No, no, this has got to be the first priority in our day is spending time in God's word. So we get to know him more mm-hmm. and know how much he loves us. Even when we're challenging middle schoolers or challenging 46 year olds, yes. like he, I just went um, over the weekend with my friend to my first ever Beth Moore event. Mm-hmm. And speaking of, the way I understand the Bible, I loved it. She was she was very much about painting a picture, and we, for two days, it was studying just certain verses in Psalm eighteen, and I was like, wow. But but the the final verse that we all had to memorize before we were allowed to leave not not really, but is um, he rescued me because because he delighted in he delights in me, and I think, wow. And that's not like there's no condition conditions attached to me. Because I would fail every single time because I'm sinful and perfect no matter how much I want to be a perfect human and please God and glorify Him and honor Him with my words and my actions. But He rescues me because He is the Redeemer and the final answer, not me. And yes. I need to be looking outside of myself always. And it's so easy, just like when parenting my kids. You know, I'm tired. I don't feel like dragging her out of her room. Mm -hmm. She can skip devotion tonight. No, Mm -hmm. no, that's the, we've got to give our kids that gift. Mm -hmm. There's too many things in the world that are pulling them so far away. Absolutely. And we've read, we just rest in his promises that even if it looks messy and it's dragging her out of her bed or whatever, she's, and we get the eye rolls and we get the rah, 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 rah. Like, all right, Lord, it's in your hands. What? Okay, they're the three pieces. So we the the box, that's still mm-hmm. a giveaway. So that, yeah. that episode's going to air today. So I can't wait to get emails. I hope I get I hope you million. Get, yeah, at least. At least. At but least. there's three parts to having, well, mm-hmm. what, well you read and it. I You've think got we the book will in front have of you. Pastor Dustin come and talk about oh, this Oh, this will be so exciting. Um, but a spiritually vibrant home has messy prayers, loud tables, and open doors. Love it. I love the messy prayers of, it's not going to look perfect. It's nope. not going to look great. It's going to be messy. Honestly, at the end of the night, I'm when you're like, God, I'm out of words. Mm-hmm. You know that I love you. And then once you start talking or journaling or whatever, it might be super messy, but you just have that conversation and know that. God's not afraid of our mess. Yeah. In fact, if we see anything in Jesus, it's he went right into the mess. Yeah, He came to earth in Praise the first God. place. <laughs> yeah. He's not afraid. The loud tables are a lot about what we talked about last week of just having those conversations yeah. and not being afraid to talk about it and to be open and not have all the right answers and mm-hmm. but share. And then the open doors is all about hospitality, which I, you know, the first two of like, oh yeah, of course, but the hospitality one surprised me more. But I like it. I do too. But I don't consider myself very hospitable. I disagree. I never know what people want to eat or drink, and I just get sweaty when I think about it. <laughs> I can't. I, but I want to be that person. Michael is. Michael is way better at hosting people than I am. I see, and I would disagree because when I think of your hospitality, I don't think of like food and drink, and that I think you are so open to conversation, like just to sitting down and having a conversation. And to me. That like I could care less about food and drink. I'll bring the bubbly waters. You can yeah. come to my house, but you got to <laughs> feed yourself. Just yeah. go to the fridge because yeah. I don't know. That's, that's Help perfect. yourself. That's yes. v- being very hospitable. Yes. My fridge is your fridge. I might not <laughs> offer it. No, yeah, just go get it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for this great conversation, Rachel. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. You Thank you for your Bethany Ranty day. Well, you know. Yes. You never know what you're going to get. I, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> okay, thank you for listening. This has been a Messiah Lutheran ministry production. Subscribe to Messiah Lutheran on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can also find our worship services and our Sermon Extra podcast by searching Messiah Lincoln on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our content. If you'd like to know more about Messiah Ministries, visit messiah.us. We'd love to hear from you as well, so please email us at littlethingsatmessiah.us. At